<clears throat> this is probably Star Wars Paladin. Um, playing this Galactic Starfighter game. I find it hard to get upset things out of my head. Once they set in, I had a really good um, coping mechanism for a while, which I'll go into in a minute. But um, it fell apart. Was it last night or the night before? Had a really good coping mechanism. Last night reverted back to my old one. Because my new coping mechanism was not working. Oh, damn it, they're just gonna sit on their gunships the whole freaking game. I can't kill a. Two gunships all the time by myself. I need uh, my buddy Bobcat here with me to try to kill that many gunships. Gosh darn it. That's bullshit. I feel like my seeker vines need to get. Oh, and I logged onto the wrong ship. So, coping. Um, I've been trying this new coping mechanism that's been working really well. Basically, you kind of give, you kind of give in to the fact that. Um, You put whatever is bothering you, make it kind of passive, so it, so it, so you sort of don't think about it. But um, you'll obviously still think about it. But, like, worry. Basically, you stop worrying about it. You say, yes, I'll, I'll think about it if I need to think about it, if there isn't something more immediate. But I'm going to stop worrying about it. And what happens is the solution, sooner or later, will present itself. And I'll, you know, more more on that in a minute. FSDA! Um... Satellite lost. They don't like me being here. Where am I supposed to be? I don't have a freaking node to be at, you dumb shits. This is... This is my home. How is this... How is that turret firing at? Oh, it must be firing at somebody else. Anyway. Well, that's weird. It's like firing at me, but... It's freaking weird. Anyway. Um... Basically, the, the idea behind my strategy is you, uh, nice. You're kind of, it's kind of like crowdsourcing, is what we would call it in computers. Is that thing just randomly shooting at me? Anyway, it's like crowdsourcing. You, you give your problem to to the cloud. Somebody else answers it without even realizing it. And then you kind of just get your answer back. Now, of course, people would say, oh, well, you're just... you're giving the problem to God. Well, okay. That's one... That's, that's one way of looking at it. It's like, you can look at a spoon and call it a spoon, or you can look at the spoon and say it's a metal thing with a curved shape 
or whatever. You kind of see what I mean? It's like they can both be the same. It can be the same thing, or they could be completely different. There's really no telling. There's no way to know. There's no way to prove it, which means there's no way to disprove it. So there's nothing wrong with uh, with either. Break, your, break yourself. There's there's um, no reason to say either one's right or wrong. The only uh, the only abstraction to that is atheists. It's like. Well, technically, atheists are, by definition, wrong, since they can't actually prove what they believe in, and us not being able to prove it doesn't mean that we're wrong. They'll never be able to prove that they're right, and we don't have to prove anything. They'd say the same thing, but atheists just means that they're closing a part of themselves off to prove a pointless argument. So, you ignore all that and you realize that there's some kind of cloud, whether it's a god cloud or a people cloud or whatever kind of cloud. I had... I, I guess what had happened is I had had two kind of levels of problems. You give stuff to quote unquote give stuff to God that's like super long term really really long term stuff oh you're a little bitch aren't you with the idea that it's so far out that only through training and statistics and luck and other people are you possibly going to get that far? It's so far out. And there's so many millions of potentials that... So that's the stuff that I'd quote-unquote give to God. The shorter things, more immediate problems, I was trying to just kind of... passivize them, kind of put them on a little cloud and let them float around. Sort of like asking people Except I'm not really literally asking anybody. Um, not really asking anybody, but that's what ends up happening. And then you kind of just get the answer all of a sudden. As if you had asked. Either somebody just comes up and randomly tells you, or you overhear somebody talking about it, or you call somebody and they just happen to have the answer for you. Or whatever. Well, that's all good and fine, but I just sometimes. Sometimes I think you just get so upset and exacerbated and, and flustered. You feel hopeless. And, and not that it's not working, and not that it's not working fast enough. It's, it's that... There are so many details... We can still win this. ...happening so quickly... ...that you don't see how it could possibly... ...succeed. And I think that's the way... ...people feel with maybe like weddings. I don't know if you've ever been through a freaking wedding, but that's what it's like. That's why women are just usually freaking ragged as hell during weddings, because there's a million things that have to happen in almost exactly the same time, and no amount of sixth sense, or whatever you'd want to call it, helps you cope. <laughs> There's no way to just sit there and meditate away <laughs> the wedding preparations, or just just as for example. And and it really, if you thought about it, driving on the fr on the freeway every day, 
is actually when I think about it. You think of every traffic light, you think of people driving super fast with no regard for anybody else, and what happens if a cop pops out and grabs the person next to you? Which way do you go? What happens if a frickin' ambulance pops out of nowhere? I got an idea. I'm just gonna keep recording until the next match starts. Give me something to do. Hey, top one assist on our side. We did really bad that game. Look at those kills. Da -da 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 -da. Terrible, terrible. It's, am it's amazing that we were able to do that. Good. Stop the video now if you don't want to hear me introspectively bullshitting until the next pop, but the problem is the problem is the pops have been taking so damn long that uh, I don't really have anything to do. I either go and surf forums or whatever. But anyway, so I'll just sit here and I'll I'll cut it when the next pop happens. Um There's just so much shit happening on the freeway. And, and the way I tell people is, you never realize it, unless maybe you're in Germany and drive on the Autobahn, or there's a couple places here in the, in the United States, one of which I think goes to Las Vegas, and I think there's another one going into Montana. I can't remember the rest of them where there's essentially no speed limit. But, but then the, there's no traffic there, but... Uh, if you're not familiar with the United States, we have this freeway called I-5. And there's parts of I-5 where the speed limit goes up to, uh, 75? 77? Yeah. And I, I don't know about kilometers, I'm sorry, I'm not going to get into the whole kilometers and meters argument right now, but... It's fast. Uh, and there's a lot of people that... Just like there's a bunch of dumb shits that don't think anybody should be able to have guns. There's a lot of people that don't believe you should ever have to drive over about 50 miles an hour. Um, those people are stupid. Anyway, uh, blah, blah. You never realize every day how close you come to dying. You're literally like a second away from dying thousands and thousands and thousands of times to and from work every day. You never give a second thought to it. Which is part of the reason why there's so many damn accidents on the freeway in the first place, because nobody appreciates... Oh, nobody appreciates it, especially my cat. So... If you actually sat and thought about the freeway, you know, on the other hand, nobody would ever drive on the freeway because it was way, way... You'd have to have a death wish. What's that? You have to have. A, oh, you, fine. You can't look at my speeder. Anyway, you'd have to have freaking death wish to uh, go on the freeway, but people do it. And, and so, what a lot of people do, or maybe I don't know, maybe I'm the only person that does it. But you know, you basically say a little prayer when you leave the house that your house is going to be fine, that you're going to be fine, that your family is going to be fine, that your cats are going to be fine. Because really there's nothing else you can do. But if you think about how many people there are on the planet, what is it, there's like 7 million going on 8 million, then you kind of round that down to how many people could actually break into your house every day. And then you go, okay, then you round that down to how many people actually have a motive and then you realize that, you know, there's probably several hundred people in your area that would love nothing more than to break into your house if they only knew where you lived and what you had. And it doesn't just have to be a rich person. They'll just as likely break into a poor person's house because they're usually only looking for jewelry and drugs. Now, bef <laughs> there's a lot of people that think that that never happens, but it happens three or four times a day in every single city and 
of the United States, unless you're living in some place like Detroit or Tacoma, or um, a couple other places where it happens even more than that. But, um, get your butt off my drink! Alright. Um... You, th you think about all these things and you realize, like, you, you can only really worry about plausible. Damn it! Cat! He's just. He just knocks everything over with his little tumbles. Come on. Come on, tumble butt. He tumbles and just sends things flying. He prides himself into how far he can knock them. Oh, and then he hopped down after a. Cleaned him off of space, of course. Oh, no, he's back. Yeah. Alright, me and the cat will talk to you. Yeah. Who's my kitty cat? But you think about all these things, it's like... You, n you can't possibly worry about it all. You can't possibly prepare for it all, so you just do your best. And there's no such thing as over-preparing, but there's a lot of people that don't prepare at all. And... It's usually baked in their preparations to take other people's crap that have prepared, and so then people who prepare have to plan on those jack holes too. You just realize, like, you can't actually think about all this stuff. You have to. It all has to go somewhere. You know, so you can say like, "Oh, I give it all to God," or "Oh, I." Put it all, and I forget the word, transference, passive, passive transference or something. But it only it only seems to work if if you're getting a a nice controlled flow of of inputs. If you can keep everything slow and maintained, uh, it doesn't seem to work when you're just getting bombarded. So anyway, to just kind of wrap everything up into a neat little package, uh, this was one of those weeks where things were just out of control at work. And there's no freaking coping mechanisms. Um, it, it's been, it's been the joke for years in my work that, um, that it's, that it's alcohol. So much alcohol that you pass out every night. That's, that's been the, the joke at my work, except it's not a joke. It's serious, and, um, some people actually do it. Some don't. I don't. But the problem here is I don't drink. To which they all say, maybe you should drink. I don't want to drink. I don't, I don't think I should have to <laughs> pay money out of my own pocket to cope with virtually impossible shit to deal with at work. It doesn't seem fair. Well, get another job. Well, that is not easy. I don't care how highly educated you are. Um, plus I love my job, but we can't, we can't get in front of it. Who's my buddy? You pray to everybody? No, you don't want to pray to everybody. I'm going to get him a little cat headset, that's what I want to get him. My little buddy. But you know, <laughs> there's not... <laughs> I, I think I think with any stressful job there needs to be counselors at work and there needs to be I think um, I think uh, mental therapy should actually be mandatory I think it should be mandatory and not put on medications not that but like stupid you know Obamacare and that bullshit I would rather have my work 
literally just pay to have like doctors at work you know and there needs to be like a confidentiality thing obviously so tell your therapist that you want to kill your boss and then they turn you in and get you fired obviously that's not productive for anybody but things like you know blood pressure um, if you had like a doctor at work you just like one day a week at lunch like everybody had their own schedule you go and get your blood pressure taken when they check your blood pressure if, if you had headaches they could just come evaluate your workspace and see what they can do if your knees hurt or your back hurt or whatever they can just come check out your desk check out your chair or whatever you know if you had a doctor there for blood pressure they can just give you blood pressure and medicine or whatever obviously you get into slippery slopes with things like narcotics but simple things you know or like if people keep complaining about it being too cold they can just have somebody come over there and say yeah it's too cold over here and then they can actually you know have these people issue corrective actions that way um, you know maintenance doesn't have to try to decipher everything likewise if you had them kind of just sitting around and my freaking anxiety just shot through the roof thinking about this but if they could just be around when somebody goes ballistic so it's not like your word against theirs but I've had it's been a few months now and it still gets it still gets my anxiety going but this guy got right up in my face and told me that I don't do my job I literally do zero of my job he told me that right to my face in front of a bunch of people none of which he would vouch for me um, you know a counselor could have been there and told him immediately you are out of line this is an immediate two-day suspension uh, beginning now do not pack up your things your keys you have 10 seconds to get out of here you know they could they could have said that but instead absolutely nothing happened to him I even went to his manager and his manager just gave him a hundred percent benefit of the doubt even though he wasn't there and uh, even though I stayed after work two and a half hours to try to deal with it um, and he actually gets a um, gets accolades for acting this way to other people and um, a couple years ago it was a gal she even she even would do it in front of very very high level managers to me just destroy me right in front of very high level managers and they wouldn't do anything about it but if you had like a counselor there they could have just said today's suspension now I don't care about your work you're gone you're done you cannot be on the property period on the property not in the building the property for 48 hours and furthermore when you come back you don't report to this desk you report to HR where you're cleared to come back in they could they could do things like that <laughs> you know but instead we have just this freaking this nanny state and they try to push everything off on management who's not trained and then freaking doctors which if you think about it they're kind of quote unquote outsourced um it's freaking it's bullshit so if your head's killing you or if your eyes feel strained or whatever you have to go try to explain it to a doctor who's not there 
damn, these pops are taking forever. This is what I was telling Bobcat. It's not, it's not queuing with full loads because there's not... There's not enough people to start a Republic queue is what's doing it. This is freaking stupid. Anyway, so yeah, I had a rough week, but there isn't shit I can do about it. If there's nothing if there's nothing serious with you, counselors will just take your money to listen to you and then show you off. If there is something serious with you, the counselors won't touch you with a frickin' ten foot pole because you're an insurance liability. So you're just stuck. You're absolutely stuck. And most of my coworkers seem more intent on tearing each other down than they do trying to dig our way out of this problem that we're having. Because I don't think they understand the gravity of the situation. I think they are so unbelievably selfish and short and narrow sighted that they have no idea what we're up against. I don't want to look for a new job. I made a promise to myself a long, 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 long time ago. And said, you know, if I can get away with it, I never want to have to look for another job the rest of my life. I hate job hunting. I hate phone interviews. I hate in-person interviews. Oh, finally. Finally, freaking pop. Alright, I'm gonna cut this, and I'll see you guys in-game. Thanks for listening to me ramble. Bye.